education of students. Here's Bill Gates talking about the impact his teachers had on him. two and three or more teachers. So that's really the data I focused on. And I hypothesized that if you had more personal relationships with teachers, you would be more likely to be in class more, have fewer absences, and also that you could participate in more extracurricular activities. The data I collected actually did support my hypothesis, which was nice to then. Um, and now, the word teacher-student relationship kind of has a little bit of a negative connotation because of some news stories that are out there right now and again. So I just want to clarify, this doesn't mean you have to talk to them outside of school or be good friends with them outside of school, but just within the walls of the school, you have a good, a solid relationship, you feel comfortable with them, you can talk to them. So that's what that kind of means. So I tried to space out the <coughs> distribution of these surveys between AP level courses and honors courses and uh, regular courses, just so I would avoid getting a biased sample. So just put that on the <coughs> bit. Please click to the next side, please. So for the number of absences, you'll see on this pie chart that for students who had two personal relationships with their teachers, it's spaced out pretty evenly. A little more than a third had zero to three absences, about a third had four to seven, and about a third had eight to 10. Now, when you go to students with three personal relationships with their teachers, the graph is way different. You can see that over half had zero to three absences. And uh, about 33% about had between four and seven, and about 11% had eight to 10 absences. So that supported my hypothesis. Students are much more likely to be in class if they can connect with their teachers. For the number of extracurriculars, I have a few more pie charts on this uh, table for you. For the next one. For students that had two personal relationships with their teachers, 44% uh, participated in three or more extracurriculars. 13% participated in one. 13% participated in two. And 31% of respondents said that they did not participate in any extracurricular activities. Now, on the graph for students with three personal relationships with their teachers, way over half participated in three or more extracurriculars. 28% uh, participated in two, 17% participated in one, and none, none of the respondents with three personal relationships participated in zero. So you can see that having personal relationships with your teachers motivates you to be more active in your school and your community. A few days ago, I actually interviewed a junior at Mount Pleasant High School, and I asked him how many extracurriculars he did. He said four. Then I asked him if he had a teacher he considered to be his mentor. He was like, yeah. And then I said, would you be involved in those extracurriculars if it weren't for that teacher? And he said no. He didn't even hesitate. He just said no. All right. So when I wrote my senior project proposal, I focused on four main questions, and those were, what is the importance of forming good relationships with your teachers? How can a teacher impact your life outside of school? Can you impact your teacher's life? And also, is having a teacher you consider to be a mentor, does that make you more likely to go to college? So, children, children spend seven, approximately seven hours with their teacher for five days a week for 10 months. So forming a good relationship with your teacher 
Okay. An American uh, psychology an American Psychology Association study showed that forming a good relationship with your teacher, students who formed a good relationship with their teacher learned the material much better. So you get a higher quality education. Based on my research, I found that when a student likes a teacher, they're less likely to be absent. It's easier to find motivation to go to class. It's easier to find motivation to do work when you're in class. And also, if a problem such as bullying or anything like that arises, it's much easier to solve that problem much easier to find solutions to that problem. All right, so can a teacher impact your life outside of school? Yes, they can. Here's how. My research determined that students who have more personal relation relationships with their teachers participate in more extracurriculars. And also, if a student has a close personal relationship with their teacher and a problem arises at home, perhaps abuse, something of that nature, it's also much easier to solve that problem. Jamel Graham is a banker who works on Wall who worked on Wall Street. He switched his career midway, and he went back to school and he got a degree in teaching. Here's him talking about why he made a career switch. He went from being a banker on Wall Street to being a math teacher in New York. So it's kind of a vast career difference. And he did it because his students impacted his life. To get an example that was a little bit closer to home, I asked Mr. Roberts in the social studies department, how do students impact your life? And I actually asked him after lunch about a week ago. And he told me to give him about a day to think about it. And then halfway through fourth hour, the next hour, he called my classroom told me that he got really excited about my question, and he wrote me about two pages, about an half hour. So I'm going to read you an excerpt from that. What have my students taught me? They taught me the importance of relationships and education in the real world. If I don't make connections with my students, then why should they care about anything I'm saying? Why? I should be just as invested as they are. They taught me to value the people around me, to appreciate the love and support of those around me. All right, so my last question was, are you more likely to go to college if you have a teacher you consider to be a mentor? When you're applying to college, colleges look for motivated students. You have to be motivated. They look for a lot of extracurriculars, a lot of good extracurriculars. They look for solid attendance, and they also look for letters of recommendation. Now, what can a teacher provide for you if he's your mentor or if she's your mentor? <laughs> They provide motivated students. We went over that in the first slide. They motivate you to do more extracurriculars. They motivate you to be in class more. And they can write good letters of recommendation. <laughs> so just based on those four things, I, I would definitely say yes, you are more likely to go to college if you have a teacher who considers being a mentor. So what am I going to do with the information I discovered? <coughs> right now, there's a group of teachers who are working in the school board and with the administration to set up a program for student-teacher mentorship. I'm going to give the information that I unearthed, that I researched and <coughs> discovered, to those teachers, it's primarily Mrs. Heck, I think. So I'm right now in the process of talking to her to get her this slideshow, to get her my data. And I really hope that a study done by a student will add a lot of weight to her, to her argument when she's you know, going to the school board and going to the administration and trying to get this program into place. So that's what I'm going to do with my data. Do you guys have any questions about anything I talked about or any of my research?
I think it's a good idea to yeah, share this with teachers, but I think it's also important to share this with students as well. So beyond the eighth grade exchange, how might you um, get this information out to uh, students of MPHS? Another idea I had actually had, or well, Gavin Thayer actually had it. He was writing an article for the Oiler Press on newspaper, and I was just talking with him about my senior project, and he asked me if he could write an article about it. And I actually, I think he is writing that article right now. So that's And follow up. Yeah. So I think that this would be really interesting. So we're going to be starting a crude program next year with the mentoring kind of idea, right? Mm -hmm. With Ms. Hap, that's kind of the idea she's working with. What if you put together a small, like minute long kind of video presentation where you can kind of share some of your data and share some of the graphs that can be used at the beginning <coughs> of that crew uh, thing in the year for all teachers. I think that would be really cool. That way it's not just something the teachers have kind of forced upon the students, but students see the value in this as well. Mm -hmm. I, I want to that. It wouldn't have to be long, you know, yeah, like no, a minute. I'm just not going to. Piggybacking on your question, this information is really is relevant to all, all the students and things like that. I love that you focus on juniors and seniors because they're the ones that Right well, now, would have that information that you were looking for. I was for. trying to figure out if it had helped them in right. the first two years of high school. And was going but to help them the, the really important piece is that this information goes to the school board and the administration because they're the ones that are ultimately going to make the decision if we can move forward with this advisory group that, that wants to set up this kind of a program for next year. And apparently, they're not convinced. Mm -hmm. So That's what I, I, think, I think students and teachers are, are convinced that. We know that this happens anyway. It just seems so self-explanatory. Exactly. But, so it's, but it's the other adults in our world that yeah. are convinced that this would be a good thing. So. Any other questions? Thank you guys for listening. Yeah.